Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how to make this jig for tying bowstrings. And what you're going to need material wise is some wood that measures one and a half inch by one and a half inch. You need two pieces that are one foot long, two pieces that are six foot long. You can use a two by four and cut it down since two by fours measure one and a half thick. You'll need a piece of vinyl tubing that will fit a three eighth inch bolt, fit over top or fit inside. You'll need four eight inch uh, bolts. I used a carriage bolt. You need nuts for on those. You'll need some quarter inch bolts. You'll need two three eighth inch bolts. Uh, the quarter inch bolts are four inches long. These three eighth bolts are also four inches long. You'll need two wing nuts for on these and various washers. Um, you're going to need four fender washers and these are going to be modified or at least two of them will be. You need to take two of these fender washers. These have a 3 8 inch hole and we need to do a modification and this is what we're going to do with the 3 8 washer. Okay, the fender washer or fender bolts have a square shoulder underneath right here. And what I'm doing here is uh, making this lock into that 3 8 inch hole. Okay, that doesn't allow this bolt to rotate or pivot inside. So what we're going to do is drive this shoulder into this hole. and then we're going to bend the sides up. This is to allow the bolt to uh, not turn when we tighten the wing nut on the top. This will go into a slotted groove on the underside of the tying jig. Okay, let's make one more of these. Okay, I'm setting the jaws of the vise just so the 3 8 bolt will fit closely in there. And we drive this down in. Like that. And inspect to make sure that this comes all the way down. Like that. Okay, now these tabs, two sides have to be bent up. And the way I do that is I use the jaws to support these, to hold them together. and we nudge two sides up like that.
right like that. These one foot long blocks, we want to drill three holes in each one of these and we want to use an accurate measurement. So we want dead center. We want to come in one inch from each side. Center of those lines now. The two outside holes are going to be countersunk with a Forstner bit and the reason for that is we need to provide clearance for this head so that it can pivot across the horizontal rails without striking it. So I have my Forstner bit set to stop when it reaches the specific depth that I want. A Forstner bit leaves a square bottom to the hole. You can see here and it also leaves a center point. That center point we'll use to guide the 3 8 inch bit on center of that hole and that gives us a shoulder for the head of this bolt. Now because I want this to be as accurate as possible I will step drill these the remaining holes. The 8 inch bolts now are inserted from this end. Okay, now there's a shoulder here that doesn't have threads. We're going to have to stack washers and then bring a nut down onto that and draw the square shoulder right here into the wood and that will keep this from being able to turn. Here I have a few washers actually there's five right there. Okay then we run a 3 8 nut onto the bolt. and with a wrench we'll draw that tight. Once these are assembled then you take your 3 8 inch vinyl tubing the inside hole is 3 8 and then we trim this right at the top and that unit is finished. On the six foot pieces you want to cut a channel for this to ride in, for the bolt to ride in, and that channel here is just two passes on the table saw set at uh, three eighths of an inch. And that will allow this to slide and it will keep this from rubbing on the table surface and it also will keep the bolt from turning on this side when you're tightening the wing nut on the opposite end. And now what we need is blocks cut 3 8 inch and this is 1 inch depth and we are going to glue those in. Here is the channel that we created in the jig and this is for our modified washer and this will keep 
the bolt from turning when it's in there. Now, I glued the spacer. You can see here the channel. And when I did, I left a gap for the bolt. Now you can glue this in solid and drill that out, but this was much easier. And after I glued it, you can see I ran a few bolts to give it extra strength. Okay, once that's in, this is the end point. We put this washer. This washer does a couple things. Um, it allows pivoting without dragging on the top surface. And also I'm going to put my adhesive tape measure on here. And this will allow clearance to uh, swing across the tape and not drag. And you can see it's a snug fit. And we apply our 3 8 wing nut. This allows us to secure it in either position. Here's our 3 8 carriage bolt with the modified washer. We apply that into our channel. A point to be noted, uh, when washers are manufactured, they're stamped. And when the process of stamping, it will create on the edge of a washer a rounded surface and a surface that is crisp, sharper. You can see on this one. This fender washer, same process. Uh, this is residue from some of the glue, but there's a surface that's rounded and a crisp surface. Because this is going to slide on the wood, if I have the sharp edge down, that will constantly scrape the wood surface. So I want to put the rounded side up. It would be kind of like a ski, the front of a ski. That would allow that washer to slide more freely on this. The uh, gold post here, it's going to be locked onto it. It won't be sliding. So when you assemble that lower washer, make sure that the smooth side is down, the rounded side, rounded edge is down, and that will allow this to slide more freely and not scrape the wood. This is a Sterrett tape measure. It has a self-adhesive backing. This is metal. You can also find them in a vinyl. And this is used on uh, different types of tools, table saws, uh, chop saws, and I'm going to use this on the bowstring tying jig. And uh, this can be cut to length. Uh, the self-adhesive will allow it to uh, adhere, and uh, can, that would be used as the reference then. This also comes uh, reading the dimensions from left to right and you can also get it reading right to left. So depending on your use uh, you have to choose the right type. So in th this particular one I'm using it reading from left to right. Now to calibrate this tying jig with our uh, measuring rule we need to know what the length is going to be, so we start at the leading end here and we measure to the outside edge and right here 
the edge is measuring 79 inches. So we're going to calibrate it on the rule, on the, the frame, to 79. In this position, this would give us the maximum length of the finished string. And this is 79 inches to the very outside here of this post. Now our measurement here, because we can't measure over here, there's nothing to attach to, we're going to use this edge of the goal post as our uh, indicator. And because we were accurate when we laid this out, both ends of this goal post will be at the same point here. So when I lay the tape out, I'll secure the 79 right here. This is a foil or metal and you can see here the adhesive and you can see right there this is where we're going to attach this tape and when this is down that washer will allow this to pivot across the tape. Now if that were going to be an issue you can always apply the tape to the side. The leading edge of the tape is not usable and we can remove the beginning and this can be cut with a pair of scissors or shears. This beginning part here we can use on another piece of equipment and now this is set at 79 so we will remove the adhesive and apply our sticky tape right there. Right here is 79. And the jig has a polyurethane finish on it, and that allows the tape a good surface to stick to it. If that was bare wood, you would have it would be questionable how well that tape would stick onto this. This jig is now finished. It will tie a string from 22 and a half inches in length to 79 inches at the far end. Right there is the end, 79 inches. Here you can see set at 50 inches. And this is the string from my 54 inch recurve bow. And to replicate the string, I would just set the jig at the 50 inches here. And uh, go from there. Hope you enjoyed this video my friends. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.